Wembley pitch is like a palace lawn, and it's perfect cup final weather when Aston Villa in the striped shirts take the field with Manchester United, league champions and odds-on favourites to win that elusive double. Villa captain Johnny Dixon spins the coin with Roger Byrne. Johnny wins and chooses to play with what little win there is. Manchester are the youngest cup team ever, but they start off like veterans. Manchester winger Johnny Berry beats his man and cuts across to pass to Taylor. Taylor moves in, but goalie Nigel Sims dives at his feet. Villa stage one of their lightning counter-attacks right into the Manchester area. The ball comes from the wing to Peter McFarland, who heads. Ray Wood jumps for it, and they bring each other crashing down. Both men seem to be in pain. Referee Frank Holtas calls for the trainers. McFarland's only shaken, but Wood's taken a really bad knock. He has to leave the field on a stretcher. With only seven minutes gone, the worst possible luck for Manchester United. They battle nobly on and try to start an attack. But it's heavy going with only ten men. Jackie Blanchflower takes over a goal, and the Villa soon give him plenty of work to do. But McFarlane's shot misfires. Crowther beats Bobby Charlton, races on to meet Edwards, and he's beaten him too. Danger for Manchester again, but Jackie Blanchflower's playing as though he'd been in goal all his life. Tommy Taylor has it, and Manchester are on the move. No sign of Wembley nerves about these boys. In spite of his injured jaw, Ray Wood's back in play, taking the right wing for the time being. To help him out, Manchester concentrate on the left till he finds his feet. But their attack is handsomely held by goalie Sims. Villa skipper Dixon loses it to Bill Whelan, and Roger Byrne gets it away. A long one into the Villa goal mouth. Taylor's there, but he stopped. And Nigel Sims pounces on it safely. Half time and no score either way. Everyone in the huge Wembley crowd, from the Queen to the oldest fan, is tense with excitement. As Villa kick off for the second half, it's still anybody's game. For the first few minutes, Ray Wood is off the field again, and Villa's extra strength carries them forward. Danger for Manchester. But McFarland's header hits the post. He tries again, and Blanche Flower stops it. United hold their own till Wood returns to the right wing. And once again at full strength, they sweep down on the Villa goal. But Sims takes it beautifully. Now Villa start to put on the pressure. Jackie Sewell passes out to the left wing. Bill Fuchs gets it away, but the winger recovers and steals it back. Blanche Flower collides, and the ball goes loose. Manchester try to clear, but Villa's winger, Leslie Smith, stops it. Out to Johnny Dixon, who passes to McParland, and Blanche Flower hasn't a chance. One up for Villa. From a free kick, Manchester nearly equalise, but Edwards slices his kick. And a second attempt by David Pegg goes wide. Now it's Villa again, inspired by their one-goal lead against a team everyone said couldn't lose. The ball goes out to the right wing, where Manchester skipper Roger Byrne tries hard to stop it. But the winger flicks it past, and the attack is on. A hot shot hits the post, then McFarland bangs home the rebound. Villa's supporters go mad with joy, but Manchester haven't given up the fight. They succeed in forcing a corner, and from Tommy Taylor's header, Sims concedes another. Into the centre, and it's the same again. Duncan Edwards takes it. And Taylor finds the net! A well-deserved consolation prize for Manchester United. But that's how it stays, and it's skipper Johnny Dixon who leads victorious Aston Villa up the steps to the Royal Box. The Queen shakes hands with Dixon and presents him with the most precious trophy of the soccer world, the cup itself. It's a record-breaking day for Aston Villa, and although Manchester United were disappointed after a gallant fight, at least they can say they lost to the first club in soccer history to win the FA Cup seven times.